grab your okay. lighter and candle? I did. Okay. We are headed over here to where my daughter was shot and killed one year ago tonight, about 10, 10, 15 on her way to work. And we're going to do a candlelight ritual for her. Pulled over by a Pettis County officer for what he claims he was doing was speeding or running the red light. He said both things. I don't know what it is to this day. This is Broadway. Which turns into 50 Highway. She would have been coming this way. A little bit late for work. She was rolling through here. I'm going about 45 and it's 40, so I imagine that's about how fast she was probably going. She went through this light. You can see there's nowhere to pull over at all. But there is right here, so immediately she pulls in. She pulls in between these two buildings. The very first spot she could possibly find to pull in, which was right here. And she pulls over as quick as she can, which was right here. And she stopped. She rolled her window down halfway, about a little more than halfway, right about like that. Because there's a bullet hole right through here and four more in the door. There's a camera right there on that wall that she or the officer knew nothing about. Thank God that camera was there because that's the only footage we have and it shows him lying. I've never viewed that footage but everyone else has viewed it and it's pretty gruesome from what I understand. Here, set this in the middle. Top. In the middle. Right, here. right in the middle of where her body was. I'd say right here. Yeah. With all of us, Father, a humble heart, I just want to thank you for each and every person that's come tonight, Lord, in honor of Hannah, and that you just put a hedge of protection on us and keep us safe in this uh, world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends of a Sedalia woman are still looking for answers tonight after she was shot and killed by a Pettis County Sheriff's deputy over the weekend. The Sheriff's office has said Pfizer threatened to shoot the deputy during the stop. Missouri Highway Patrol, which is heading the investigation, never found a gun in her vehicle. I'm John Pfizer, Hannah's father, and uh, it's, uh, it's been a pretty rough year. We're coming up on her year anniversary. They say the first year is the worst, so so we're fixing to find out. Hopefully it's that's true, because it's been a rough one. My name's Amy Pfizer, and I'm Hannah's mother. And the last year's been the worst, worst year of my life that, that I could ever imagine. I mean, I did all my crying in the beginning. It's almost like I don't have a tear left, but my heart's broke still. I still can't talk about her without crying. No, I think all the way through her little late adolescence and, and teenage years, she wanted to be a policeman. And then when she graduated and moved down here and she joined that little... Citizens... Citizens thing. Police academy. This is a police academy. They do ride ride alongs yeah. and stuff with the cops, and and she was interested in criminal justice. Yeah, I'm not I'm not down on law enforcement. Down on the one that shot her. Or the one that, you know, or the ones that know know, know stuff about these guys, and they just keep it under their hat because that's what they do to walk that blue line or whatever they whatever it is they do, snort the blue line. I don't know what they're doing, but. So no, we're we're. We broke out all day. Mm -hmm. And so was Hannah. Mm -hmm. Last time I really was fishing was the day that uh, she got killed. And I hadn't been fishing since just because I really just ain't been uh, in the mood to go fishing without her here with me. 
My name's uh, James Jacob Johnson. Uh, I'm Hannah's boyfriend. I've known her like uh, over half my life. I honestly feel that the deputy that did this was angry. He had, he definitely had a motive. What the motive was, I don't know. In the interviews the star obtained, the deputy says she pushed my arm away and I think I grabbed her shirt and pulled her towards the door to try to get her out of the car because like I said, she's under arrest now. She pulls away and grabs her phone. That's when he says she allegedly told him she had a gun. The driver would not identify herself, would not uh, roll the window down, uh, was argumentative and then threatened or said that she had a gun in the car and threatened to shoot him. They said there was there was a gun and there was no gun. They said she didn't roll her window down. That was a lie. It shows right on her with a bullet hole in it, halfway rolled down. Said she didn't identify herself when dispatch caught her. The couple times that he did radio into dispatch, ca caught her clearly stating her name, Hannah Pfizer. Did not make any threatening remarks over the dispatch, but clearly she was saying her name. He even said she was too busy trying to film him. Yeah. So there wasn't no film on no, her camera. There's no, and her camera was in the in the floor on the other side. And so there's no reason for him to think she had a gun when he already knew she had a she had a camera in her hand. No a phone. It, yeah. And it was found on the other and side. And it was found in the, in the passenger, passenger side floorboard. floorboard. But everything he said was lie. <laughs> he said he was everything he said was a lie. When it all happened, it was like everything was a secret out there. They didn't want you to know nothing. Had it not been for the camera there, we wouldn't know what we know now. It was like they didn't want no word of anything going out. I believe this is where they, this is where it's unblurred. <clears throat> so you see the deputy walking up to her car. Most of us have seen the film. And to me, it looks like there's somebody who'd walk up to a car wanting to rip a door open, couldn't get it open, got pissed off, pulled a gun and shot. That's what it looks like. They say it's different. That leaves us where we're at right now. Nobody charged and an uh, innocent girl dead. Within five minutes of time, they lost their daughter to a senseless, we call it a murder because that's how we see it. We don't see it as an uh, officer involved shooting. We see it as he murdered her. Period. Tales out of Sedalia, where state troopers say the probe into the case of a woman shot and killed by a Pettis County Sheriff's deputy is complete. Pfizer was shot and killed by a Pettis County deputy. That deputy is now back at work and never charged in the case. He had his job back almost immediately. To go through something like that and then be put right back on the streets, there's definitely something wrong with it, which kind of, I think, enraged a lot of people here in town which led up to a lot of things that happened afterwards, uh, including a new sheriff at this time. This just, it just fits on here. Uh, my name is Dr. Brad Anders. I'm Pettis County Sheriff. I have been in this position for five months and 16 days and about six hours. <laughs> so it has been uh, interesting to say the least. I know 100%, 1000% that she never carried a gun. She never went threatening to shoot a cop. Never. I know that there were a lot of people that were upset. And when Sheriff Bond would be on the radio himself, uh, there would be a lot of calls from the citizens about that and you know, the number of shots fired and things like that that the citizens had concern about. The body cameras have been ordered. Uh, they're waiting for delivery and so we've taken care of the situation. Okay, so Anna Pfizer, case closed. Case closed. It, it never crossed my mind to run for this office uh, until the days passed and there were more and more outcries from the public. There were demonstrations in front of the courthouse. There were demonstrations in front of the sheriff's office. And I saw the, uh, the trust dwindling. And you know, I could, I could feel the impact here because I was a resident of this county. I have viewed the video through uh, local news outlets. Uh, you know, there were some concerns uh, through what I saw in the video, obviously tactical concerns, uh, things that uh, 
obviously could have been done differently, but you know, that's why we have training. There again, I think that there were, there were questions that, that were left unanswered. So there's lots of unanswered questions. One is five bullets. One would have been bad enough, but five? He almost acted he mad did, more he, than scared. He didn't, he didn't take a defense of being scared, which would have been to retreat towards the back of the car and call for backup. He took a stance at the front of her car and aimed and fired five times at point blank range. Do I think there was a time for de-escalation there? Yes. A special prosecutor cleared the deputy in the shooting of Hannah Pfizer. Pfizer's family insists the shooting wasn't justified. We're speaking with family and friends of Hannah Pfizer after a special prosecutor said her death was avoidable but justified. I do think the officer exercised poor judgment in creating a situation where he felt like he had to use deadly force. Had he basically backed away from the car, waited for backup, and, uh, and uh, de-escalated the confrontation, there very well may not have been the need for that, that, uh, him to use deadly force. Nonetheless, under the standard, that's not relevant to, in other words, how it got to that point is not, the, uh, is not a, a really a factor for consideration from the legal standard. My name is Steve Sokoloff and I am the General Counsel for the Missouri Office of Prosecution Services. It was made a little bit more difficult in making, the, uh, the making that determination because there was some limit, limitation on the amount of evidence that I had in that the, uh, they had not, at that time, did not have body-worn cameras. These are the body cams that uh, we equip, equip our deputies with now. This is the Panasonic Arbitrator. This department had body cameras for a brief period in 2017 and it was just left to, to fall to the wayside. That also included dash cameras. There were no dash cameras in the cars, so the deputies were making stops with no, no recording device, no dash camera, no body camera, and, you know, and, and really left to just try to tell a prosecutor what happened. The, the bottom line in that case was that um, there would, I think, have been no way to prove that at the time that he uh, he fired his weapon, that he did not have a uh, belief that he was in danger. She had said to him that she had a gun and was going to shoot him, and then uh, was rooting around down in the floorboards of the car, and when she raised up this is when he shot her. Now, he didn't see, and ultimately she didn't have a weapon, but she told him that she did. That statement that she was going to shoot the officer, is that what she said, or is that what the officer said she said? That's, it's what the officer said she said, but again, it was, it was stated at a time that, you know, he didn't say that after he shot her. He didn't say, oh, uh, she's, uh, she said she had a gun and was going to shoot me when, when he was being uh, interviewed by the, the highway patrol. I mean, it, he's at the, the point where he's standing next to the car there and, said, uh, and he said, she says she has a gun and she's going to shoot me. Are we supposed to take the officer's word? Well, it, it, again, it depends on what the circumstances are. I mean, uh, that's not anything that you can make a blanket judgment about. Certainly, um, where it's corroborated by other, uh, uh, other information, other evidence, yes. Where it's contrary to that, absolutely not. And that's the only thing that they did, why they, reason why, why they didn't charge him was because he uh, might have been in fear for his life because she said he had a gun, but every single thing, other thing was a lie. And it's obviously a lie, I mean, to us, that she would never have said she had a gun. She would have never said that to a cop. She, she would know what that would entail. <laughs> she was just trying to get to a job at, at, at the convenience store. And was late. Nine bucks an hour. Three words that has killed me. Avoidable, but, but justifiable. Now, where do you get that from? Where do you get, you took a life. How do you get to uh, avoidable but justifiable? That just doesn't make sense. Either you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, you're right. I can't be the, uh, the moral arbiter. I can't go and uh, 
have a, a trial to determine whether uh, he was um, morally uh, responsible. Those are not those are not the the tools in my uh, in my toolbox. I can either file a criminal charge uh, or not. And in order to file one, I have a legal ethical obligation to only file cases that I believe that there's a reasonable likelihood of, of success. The truth will never come out. Um, obviously, because there's two sides to every story, and one side of the story can't be told. Why? She's gone. She was murdered by Jordan Shooty.